Welcome back to Requiem Radio. I'm your host here, Solar Requiem, and my also the other host here we have tonight, Haiti C Dialect. And we have our guest, the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, Broji. Yo, what's up, Broji? How's it going? I uh, hope you guys are having a good night so far. Doing well. What about you, Hazy? Hey, it's AT Dialects, uh, the Schizo Essay Poster on Twitter. And uh, we're here joined by our amazing streamer, a man in a bit of a transitional pe- period, you know. All of his content currently, as it stands, is taking a bit of HRT. So uh, he's about to illustrate to us what that's like. Uh, OG, if you could articulate to us and the audience, what exactly <laughs> are you doing and what does your content primarily um, consist of? Uh, so before this little transitionary period, it was mainly just uh, scrambling to find a YouTube channel or videos to react to. Um, I'm trying to get more out of that and get more into prepared content. So having a script ready, not focusing as much on chat, and just trying to make actual content rather than, like I said, scrambling to figure out what I'm going to do for the next stream day. Are you kind of looking to get into a niche right now, or you're like a very specialty? Like some people do video essays. Other guys are like really into like playing video games. Like, what are you trying to do right now? Uh, so mainly, I'm trying to get into politics. So I'm trying to have a specific subject, and then for like a month or so, talking specifically about that. So basically, like a video essay. Um, yeah. So what made you exactly, is it just because it's a bit erratic to do it all? To be like, oh man, I gotta think about what exactly I'm going to be talking about today, and then I gotta make uh, content about this or that, or scrambling to have something substantive to say about any particular ongoing within the political sphere? Or do you think that your ability to be more poignant about any particular subject matter is helped out by your ability to just gather your thoughts and then provide content to your audience? So what I found out when I first started streaming, it was just me and my girlfriend. She was she's always been super supportive. But as of three months ago, we we finally had a kid and trying to prioritize the kid over streaming. Obviously, the family is always going to come first, Um, but it, it made it really difficult to try and figure out like like a good uh schedule um i would end up coming home from work and i mean obviously i still have to work out i still have to make sure i give my significant other enough love and uh the attention she deserves while also taking care of a child um i mean i as much as some people would like to uh i'm trying to be a very hands-on parent and trying to be there every step of the way for this kid um Doing it with prepared content will make it a lot easier for me to, uh, instead of 30 minutes before I'm supposed to start streaming, it'll allow me to be like, okay, I can make sure everything's good like 10 minutes beforehand and then not freak out about what's going, what's going to happen in my live stream. I like that idea. Um, more importantly, so the way this would work for you is that you would, you know, have these segments like basically structured off. You would talk about particular subject matters, move on, and you would have it more structured as like you would have like um, headlines in particular for everything you wanted to talk about. And that gives a more smooth um, formula for you to work with rather than meandering around and not really being able to get across your point. Is that kind of like what you're aiming for? Yeah, pretty much. Um, it also just kind of helps with uh, content creation in general. Um, it makes it so that way then with a, with a script, I can know exactly which parts I believe are going to be uh, noteworthy so I can make TikTok clips a lot faster instead of what my previous method was, was having to listen to the entire thing over and hopefully bookmark um, points that I thought were good. Interesting. So 
Now the question for me comes up in, as the following. What exactly got you into streaming in the way? Uh, I mean, granted, everyone can play video games. Everyone enjoys them to some regard. But what made you want to be more engaged in the political sphere? Was it simply that you wanted to do so as you felt as though there was an emerging responsibility, responsibility on your part to do so? Or was it that you thought you provided something unique to the sphere that was underdeveloped? Um, the big thing is I think I provide something unique. Uh, I consider myself a conservative, but I'm not like a typical conservative, such as I understand that we live in a democracy, and the only way that we're going to effectively find change and figure out what's best for the country is to have some give and take on specific issues. Um, specifically, when it comes to like the topic of abortion, me personally, I am 100% pro-life, but because we live in a democracy, I understand the, that we have to give and take some places. So if I had to like put kind of a middle ground in it, um, it seems like majority of Americans are okay with uh, abortion up into the first uh, trimester. So it seems like that'd probably be the best place to put a marker if one had to be one set. Interesting. Um... Now I have a question, at least I just want to fill out how you think about this. Do mm -hmm. you think that with abortion being such a um, strong position, do you think that if conservatives were a bit more lenient in their understanding on that, do you think they could have won more moderate or even centrist level demo uh, Democrats? Um, so it seems, yeah, for Pretty much, uh, it, nowadays, it seems like abortion is a losing issue for the conservatives. Um, like I said, stated, majority of Americans believe that uh, abortion should be uh, accessible in the first trimester, uh, whereas most hardcore conservatives say no abortion up to even if you're raped or some other sort of... or. Um, or, or like incest or something like that. It makes it so that way then uh, where conservatives basically lose everybody is by not allowing those simple exceptions, which take up a minority of the cases in abortions. So you don't be adding on to that too. You see in like, especially early 1970s where I feel like it went from being more of like a very scientific dispute until like nowadays it went from scientific to more of a moral dispute till now it's just like a culture war thing well i mean my culture war thing is like i feel like you're doing more damage and losing your audience more than you should so example a lot of like the right-wing conservative parties are like hell-bent on like trans issues and for the majority of like lay people it's like okay we got that sure but i don't really care who wrestles who if you know i can't afford to live or i can't afford gas like what can you do for me like that and that's the unfortunate thing of like modern day right wingers i feel like if we're talking big politics like those guys are like turning it very culture issue ish which is really bums me out but exactly conservatives are really losing point on the what makes america great and they're just focusing everything they can on culture war issues and from what it seems like is most people don't really care about the, the culture they want the account they care about jobs they care about health care um they they don't care as much about who like you said who wrestles who i think one of the um subject matters i would like to touch on is that during the um you know a bit of a caucus for a lot of the um potential candidates for the conservative party uh, a lot of them seem to be talking about just getting back to basics and fundamentals such as people's survivability their ability to financially support themselves and there were a growing amount there was a applaud and accolades um given to a lot of the people that touched on this like even if the during the Ukraine war, regardless of where you stand on the subject matter. Personally, for me, I believe that we should respect Ukraine's sovereignty and thus we should provide whatever we can to support and um, reinforce the ability to support themselves if we respect a country's sovereignty and they are part of NATO. But, however, one of the biggest scales of that subject matter is that most people seem to bring it back to not it being a anti-Ukraine position or pro-Ukraine position, but most people are 
in concern about what's going on at home with the prevalence of um, fentanyl abuse, with the large abundance of people on the uh, homeless population that is in abundance of four blocks alongside of the epidemic that is currently going on with drug abuse. A lot of people seem to be very much concerned about what is going on and currently within the states. And even people who do speak about trans issues, or at least um, give signal um, to the idea that they are opposed to those subject matters, majority of the individuals seem to be more concerned with those subject matters than anything that has to do with like culturally speaking subject matters like conversion therapy or like trans um, transgenderism. The, the conversations are in a sense, a really a dogmatic um, prescription to some degree, but it's not what conservatives in terms of the party are immediately at. And I think most people are trying to tap into that fanaticism since they believe that is what gave rise to Donald Trump and gave him his fervent audience. But majority of the cultural landscape has shifted so much that people are more mindful of what's going on in the immediate grounds that they stand upon. So I think that's why these sort of conversations are occurring, but that's why they're not resonating as much. Uh, it is good that the conversations are occurring, too, and I like that. And that's why I try to have like, you know, I've been seeing more people try to have more intellectual spheres and platforms where they could talk about that, whether I'd be through podcasts or like what I do also on the side, like debates like. Hell, I'm doing a tournament right now where a lot of the debates I'm covering are pretty heavy-hitting issues. Um, I know Broji, he's in this tournament. He was going to be debating um, abortion as well, but yeah, some incidents happened. If Broji wants to elaborate on that. Oh, man, that, that irritated me so much. Drama. So, <laughs> one topic that I feel like I can debate almost anybody on is the morality of abortion. And... We had scheduled out this debate. We were the last person in the first uh, first tier. So, like, I was super... I had done a crap ton of research for this debate. And Bunk ended up... He, so he said that he forgot the, uh, when the debate was. But I'm guessing he just... Part of me feels like he just felt it was beneath him. Um, because he ended... It was literally less than a week before we had said, okay, the debate's going to be on this day. And then it comes time to debate. One, we have a hard time getting a hold of him. And then when we finally do get a hold of him, uh, he's out for a walk and unable to actually have a Lincoln-Douglas-style debate. Um, it was just super frustrating because I feel like I could take... When it comes to abortion, I could have decimated bunk uh I, i've seen some of his youtube videos involving abortion and the big thing he does is bring up hypotheticals that literally have nothing to do with the topic at hand um i mean how i see it is if you're going to bring up hypotheticals at least make them somewhat relevant or somewhat uh attainable whereas he felt more on the need to bring up hypotheticals that could never exist and quite possibly were just absurd. Uh, I, I fully believe that Bunk is not that great of a debater when you actually look at his videos. And uh, I think it's more so the people who he debates just are terrible debaters. And to be fair to Bunk, too, I contacted him and I let him know, like, hey, you know, Broji like worked really hard in this. He's like, yeah, I get it. It's like unfortunate thing. Sorry. I'm like, all right. Um, I told him, well, although you're not in the tournament anymore, if you want to on the side, I know Broji's still willing to debate it. Even if you don't want to do it on my platform, you can do it on his or yours, but whatever ones you feel comfortable with. So he told me he is planning on getting around for that, but I kind of left it at that because like I said, I'm busy running a tournament my own thing. So it's like whatever's between you guys is between you guys, but I hope the best of luck for you if he ever does take up your challenge again. So I reached out to him like shortly after, and we had talked about doing a debate or, or just like having a conversation kind of like what I did with you. Uh, and he at first was like all for it, and then out of nowhere he just stopped responding to any of my messages. So it was like, okay, like, do you actually want to debate, or are you... So, it was also whenever his YouTube channel got, um, he got, what was it? Not quite banned, but he got muted for a little while to where he couldn't post anything on YouTube, so 
Part of me is wondering if he just does it for clout rather than the actual debate or wanting to debate. Yeah, who knows? Um, I always have the philosophy of have the benefit of doubt for people. So, you know, I know everyone like I've my big philosophy. I've told you this. I've told numerous people in my tournament. Keep family in your personal life first. If that intercedes with, you know, this debate, I'm completely OK. If you guys, you know, moving things around hell. You even told me yourself like you were having your child and I was like, okay, yeah, definitely it's okay to reschedule and like wait later down the road. And I mean, but, even just the for the debate we just had, like I ended up having a family emergency where a family member ended up um, having to get emergency surgery and you and, and my opponent were super uh, sincere and like understood the situation at hand. Um, like I would have understood more if bunk would have been like hey something actually came up rather than just i forgot i know um funny enough bunk is actually going to be debating me soon and i haven't debated in a hot minute so i'm finally dusting off some old feathers i guess but it's going to be over veganism i'm looking forward to that so oh shit old man's coming off of his rocket to, to debate <laughs> no, the this, young and funny. It's funny you mentioned that because, like, as a little kid, I think we talked about this before. My favorite all time fighting game was Soul Calibur 4. And if you were able to beat a certain character, like, a certain, like, a, basically a perfect run, you get a secret boss, and his name is, like, um, Algol or something like that. And he's just a dude sitting on a throne being, like, finally, this is my first battle I've had in ages. I'm looking yeah, forward yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just, like, sitting here, like, damn, I've been hosting and monitoring these for so long. It's like, I'm time to get back in the ring. But. It's, no, it's, it's the definition yeah. of Caesar coming down uh, to, 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 to battle the commoners, you know, truly, truly the host, the host himself <laughs> of, the, of, of the Colosseum is, is, is donning his armor. Brandon and more on that, having, um, what's his name, Shao Kahn sit in the throne in the background of each fight. And at the end, he's like, all right, my turn. He hops in there to go against like Liu Kang or something. But no, like, I hope my debate with Bunk ends up going really smoothly. Well, like. I've talked to him. He seems like he's ready for a topic um, just whenever. So we're still scheduling that out. But definitely, like, I hope he isn't. I don't think he's the type of guy to do this. But if he is, I hope he'd address it. Like, like I hope he's not dodging you or anything or, like, looking beneath you. Because that, me personally, I find that, like, crappy if anyone did that. But it's not my first thought when it comes to him. But definitely, I feel like he should reach out to you. That's my personal take or opinion. Has he ever do, has he ever done a Lincoln Douglas style debate before? To my knowledge, no. Um, I checked out his YouTube channel, and it's usually like you said. Um, he's basically just mogging on people who are like idiots, which is like you know, I get it. You gotta put idiots in his place, but I feel like I don't want to be too harsh to judge because, like I said, I haven't seen every single one of his videos, but I have seen a clip here and there where he's like absolutely dunking on someone and. You know, props to him. The guy's an eight. He just dunked on him. You know, I respect that. Like, short, putting dumbass in her place. But, like, I'd have to, like, keep going through his channel because I'm sure he has some, like, content where it's, like, more formalized. So, just on the... So, I've watched every single one of his debates on abortion and pre preparation for it. Um, he has this... The, the one debate that comes to mind is he brings down this one guy who states that abortion is the best topic that he can debate yet this guy doesn't know the how how the, like the first step in debating abortion um and so i going over the rest of his i think that there was one abortion debate where the guy kind of knew what he was talking about but bunk was still able to steamroll him with really simple arguments yeah, if you ever get to getting him in the future, you know, best of luck. Let me know how it goes. I'm hoping so. I'm probably going to end up uh, trying to reach out to him again. Just uh, now that I'm starting up my content creation again, um, I want to start having scheduled stuff, like I said. So I'm hoping I can schedule him in one of these days. All good. Yeah, so um, I've seen a lot of his debates. Um, I think he's more tempered in his more recent debates. A lot of his earlier debates were very aggro, you know, very throw you around, you know, um, go ahead and eat that cake anime. But I think a lot of his de more recent debates, he's been more of a tepid, 
um, individual, you know, more relaxed, more laid back. Um, the last debate I've seen him watch, it was like a 2v2 where it was Synth and him versus uh, someone else. And they, 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 it was more temperate. I think I don't know what exactly some people's schedules look like. So I'll give them a bit of the doubt. I'll give Bunk the benefit of the doubt to say that he I have didn't a lot more respect for Bunk or than I you. But um, I, I don't think they're like afraid. Of, um, I don't think they're afraid. I just don't know how they will. Um, the schedules comport with yours, and I think that um, if they really want to make good on the debate, I think it would be in the best interest to definitely meet up with you and schedule a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll have a lot more respect for him if he does so. No, I have a lot more respect for Bunk than I do Synth, at least. But the one, uh, <laughs> one like, I, no, I'll openly say it. I do not like Synth. I think he's a scummy person, and I think he's just very online chronically to where it's like he's the stereotypical like bread tuber. Is like you know, let me shoot semantic games. Let me see how many words I could use in the sentence. Let me see like how how much I could basically get lost in the audience, like lost in sauce to the point. It's like, what are you even talking about anymore? Like, I get it. You want to be, like, intellectual and, like, use certain words, which, don't get me wrong, time and a place for that, obviously. But, like, if you're just, like, 100% doing that and then you just lose the audience, then what's the point, you know? Right. But I think he's... Well, I think she's neat. <laughs> I'm just messing. I think they're part of the Crucible and they're more of, like, one of those... Um, definitely um, akin to a lot of the aggro debaters and that sort of spare, um, which... Comes with a certain like uh, decorum, um, with the debate styles. You know, the the more the more okay with just being a complete dick or asshole, which you definitely could lose audience members when they're talking to people. They'd be like, all right, I, I, even if like, <laughs> the, the, the argument with Rob Nor was just kind of like a bunch of like, all right, we clearly aren't actually arguing about the subject matter at hand. And Rob Nor is kind yeah. of a uh, a bad debater in my personal opinion. But even if you wanted to appeal to their audience, uh, uh, just Playing the playing shove Rob Nor in a locker probably didn't do much to uh, behoove them to come to your side. That's all I'm going to say on that matter. Yeah, and like a, a funny thing about Bunk too, actually, to get on a phone call with him, like scheduling our vegan debate, getting things in prepared, and we both ended up dealing with. I think we dealt with either the same guy or a similar dude, where they tried to make the argument that whatever the majority says is the morality. So if the majority uh -oh. agrees, <laughs> this guy on his podcast, not podcast, debate channel, he showed me a clip. I was laughing at it. He was playing Doom, just doing his thing. And then um, he asked the guy a question, like, sarcastically, like, oh, if the majority says, like, pedophilia is okay, would you say it's okay? And the guy was like, well, yeah, obviously, because the majority thinks it's good. And he just pauses his game, like, what the hell are you talking about, man? And I was like, <laughs> that's something I was laughing at. I, I was like, good one, Bunk, like, fucking dunk at that idiot. <laughs> But oh my yeah, God, that, that guy was that guy was possibly, and this is the thing that made yeah. me so perplexed because every time it, like Bunk would lay out that that's exactly what they were saying, the guy would reiterate like, "I don't think you understand what I'm saying. I'm just saying like, uh, society typically uh, understands um, collectively what is morally virtuous." And he's like, um, "So would slavery be all right?" And like, "Yeah, I, I guess in yeah. that sort of society." And he's like, "Ah, uh, <laughs> like why are you biting these bullets? Why are you just accepting that that's just..." <laughs> So I, can understand, I, I understand. I, I encourage you to do so. I understand to an extent because if you think about laws, um, a lot of laws are just co codified morality, um, such as do not steal, do not kill, stuff yeah. like that. But then obviously there's some things that have never been moral, no matter even if the law permitted it, such as slavery. Um, and yeah, I think that's what he's trying to argue. But going along with the collective whim is not really a good like rationale. Oh, not at all. Your basis has, I well, even the ability clip, to push yeah. back like anyone argumentatively. If I could find a clip, I'll send it. But the guy wasn't arguing law either. He was just arguing purely the collective, like saying just a group of people uh, disagreeing okay. on. Them. Yeah. And he my favorite um, argument that uh, it's, it's while we're on the topic of punk, I thought my favorite yeah. thing is that they were talking about um non-consensual sex um and um this this individual this amazing galaxy brain individual flamenco uh the ex-member of the uh, kill stream uh with uh nick uh um i mean i mean uh, ethan, ethan ralph Ross. uh one of the funniest things for me in this situation was that um in this situation 
Monkhead basically asks him what is like non consensual sex and what is like, you know, graping somebody in the situation. And he did like, like, no, I don't think like assimilating, like, of course, he got into veganism. So he was basically asking, is it non consensual sex to like forcibly inseminate a creature? Or like, but he's like, the thing that Flamenco decided to make his parameters was like, well, if you didn't like climax, you're not like, like, you're not doing that. You're not <laughs> forcing yourself. I'm, I'm, I'm like, yeah. Why is that? Why, why is that your? Why is that your threshold? <laughs> why, out of everything you could have chosen, why? <laughs> Ooh, it's kind why? of like there's this individual. I'm not gonna name him because I'm not in the mood for him to like spam my DMs with, with like him like shit posting. But he's very pro utilitarian, and he tried arguing with me. Um, like you know, why utilitarian ethics is absolute, and I. For anyone who knows me, absolutely despise utilitarianism with a passion. And I posed him a question that he basically couldn't answer straightforward, where he was like arguing, yeah, you know, negative harm is always bad. And if it's like neutral or positive, those are good things. So I'm like, okay, let's say, and this, you like hypotheticals, let me give you a hypothetical. There is a guy, like some college frat bro, walking home from a bar at night. And he sees a woman passed out in the alley across the street. No cameras there. No one's around to witness. No one's going to see it. Nothing. He decides to go over there and check on her. And she's blackout unconscious. She's drunk. She's still alive. Just unconscious. And he ends up deciding to have his way with her. And, you know, after he's done, zips up his pants, goes about his way. You know, nothing happens. She wakes up the next day, has no memory recollection of it, and goes about her day. And I asked him, like, in this scenario, she felt no ne negative harm or there was no harm involved in the scenario and no one is there to witness it. So there's no like trauma or anything. And overall, like, I feel like, you know, I try to like do sarcastically when you argue that's a positive good since he was able to get his rocks off and she wasn't able to like, you know, freak out or like feel any pain or anything like that. And then watching him flounder trying to defend utilitarianism in this scenario, because the, the utilitarian answer <laughs> would be, yes, this is a beautiful thing. So good. You know, net positive benefit for everybody. And then he was like, well, oh, no, technically. And I'm like, well, it doesn't make sense. He kept trying to add in third parties. It's like, oh, but what if there's a security camera that's on? I'm like, well, there's not. He's like, oh, oh, what if there's God. a podcaster? I'm like, there's not. And he's just yeah. floundering like a fish out of water. And I'm like, yeah, just take the L on this. Can I say one of my favorite flounderings that occurs within any sort of inquiry is when somebody basically tries to add in additional information in order to opt out of answering the question. They're like, well, that wouldn't have occurred because there was cameras around. Or uh, uh, is embryo in a um, flesh nine-month-old baby that's fresh out of the womb the same thing? Well, I don't know, but I know people who would save uh, the babies more than the embryos. I'm like, I I'm not asking them. Like, like, I love when people do those type of things because it's very clearly that like they're trying to find any way to opt out of answering the question because they clearly feel as though they have no ability to like actually engage or at the very least it shows a blatant hole in this in the way of articulating their position so i love when people do that like well uh, uh well there could be cameras like are you are you trying to like argue all these other facets as a way to get away from actually engaging what we're talking about here because i feel like if you were to just accept the hypothetical the way it was presented you would obviously understand where you just um absolutely stepped on the garden hose but to get back into the subject matter of streaming and all that um what do you think streaming is going to go? We have platforms like Twitch, Kick, and uh, Rumble, you know, a predominantly more conservative site, but it's definitely varying out to different avenues to ensure that it has a um, basically a, a, a variety of content to look forward to rather than just being the place where you know the uh, undesirables by mainstream go to. Um, what is your general opinion about all these sites that I just discussed here? So when it comes to streaming, Twitch right now, and I feel like almost always will be, will be the leader, um, mainly because they've been around for years. They have uh, a lot of the uh, additions that people are looking forward to. Um, YouTube, ha it, you, in my opinion, YouTube is the best for streaming. But you don't really get a lot of vis uh, visibility, such as on Twitch. Like everybody knows, that's the place you go for streaming. Uh, I can't think of how many people actually want to go watch somebody live on on YouTube. 
um, one thing that YouTube has that the other streaming services need to get together if they want to actually uh, improve is the ability to rewind a live stream. Um, that's becoming so valuable, especially to like uh, reactionary streamers. Uh, that at, it, it's kind of ridiculous that Twitch seems to be regressing in certain aspects. Um, I, I really have a lot of hope for Kick, but th they're still so new that they don't have any ad revenue. They don't have. They're, they're backed by a gambling company, and there's a lot of people who are completely against gambling. So once they are actually ad friendly, I think they'll really start to uh, grow. Um, they also have to learn how to. The, the only way, way they're going to get ad friendly is if they start uh, removing some people. Like they came out as a full free speech platform. But unless they expect to be dependent on gambling money, uh, they're they're never gonna grow past it. I was actually gonna ask a question too. Um, I don't personally use Twitch much, but can you have like twenty four seven like streaming even if you're not there? I know it sounds like a very stupid question. So it depends. Um, there are some streamers who uh, will do like subathons, and for every so many subs, they'll add on time to how long they're streaming. I think this one dude's been doing it for like three months, but he sleeps on stream, he showers on stream, like everything he does is on stream. Um, the real big issue that I have is when people. Uh, Hassan's a really big uh, proponent of this, is putting on other people's content and then walking away for 10-15 minutes. Um, and then the worst part is he doesn't give the content creator that he's watching or putting on stream, he doesn't really give them any shout-out. He will... I think one time he had uh, the name of the video and who was by on stream for all of like 15 seconds. But if someone were to come in past those 15 seconds, they're just like, okay, we're just watching this video, I guess. Uh, not to mention this revenue from the original streamer, correct? It's not like, let's say I'm reacting to a video, they get a portion of the pie almost. It just goes purely to me. Exactly. And that's, I, I, there's got to be some sort of legal standing there too, such as a DMCA. Because you're just completely ripping off someone else's content, where and gaining the revenue from that, where the person who whatever video is being watched is, they're losing all out on all the people who potentially would go watch the original video. Like I understand, okay. I understand uh, reacting to videos, but you either have to be there completely, adding some sort of in your own input, or you have to actively say hey new people we're watching this video um this is where you can find it this is the content creator or even better ask the original content creator like hey are you okay if i react to your content you know 1000 oh, percent. because i know there's tons of like big streamers who i'll get into later but the xqc drama going on right now mm -hmm. um but yeah i'll go ahead and let az talk because that's all he's about to say something um, currently, as it stands right now, there's been a lot of reaction content that has existed on the internet, and ever since Jinx was someone who grew in prominence for saying little to nothing when it came to his videos, but simultaneously having a myriad of content to react to, most people argue that the value of a Jinx sort of content channel was more of a merchant, you know, an individual who uh, amassed an immense amount of wealth due to him being stunned. Anyway, the question that is usually prompted by these um, channels is usually what is the personality versus the content in question like there is definitely um 
YouTubers, or at least watches of YouTubers, streamers of alike, that would love to see someone like XQC's reaction to a particular type of content because they want to know their insights. Due to their wheelhouse of expertise, they naturally want to see what type of particular insights that cannot be provided by the common person that can be informed by watching this particular YouTuber or streamer. But in situations like Hassan, where he's just leaving the stream on, People often question why even have it on, but some people even make the arguments as HIE did, I think back in 2017, where he argued that watching the content with someone else is like having a friend there, even though he then caveated it, or at least argued that it was sad that someone had to do that. That is a valid reason that some people might do this, that some people find a community of uh, streamers, discords, kittens and fathers that uh, love to gather around the campfire of the social media platforms and uh, watch it with their, you know, Discord kittens, you know, as they meow and call. Um, that is definitely an avenue. But in terms of how someone might feel cheapened in terms of the content is that usually the profitability is a question here. So now I have to ask you, all you to a question here. Um, do you believe that the issue here isn't exactly that um, someone's watching it, but is it more of the issue of like who's making bank? And is it more like an innate feeling of, well, this is wrong because I spent so much work on it? Is it like a feeling of unfairness or lack of trans? Like, is, is it more about profitability than actually people just watching the content? Because at times people watch content on like discords and like collectively large like um platforms like that where they could be missing out on some views because some people are watching this with a large amount of people through one screen so where does that line be is it is it drawn exactly it's the question i'm asking i feel like it's a mix oh go ahead brogy i was just say i mainly think it's about profitability so like if it's a small time streamer uh even if they were to stream it it's not gonna uh, chances are it's not gonna go anywhere um, whereas if you have a big time streamer, especially like Hassan and whatnot, they, if you don't add any of your own insight to it, you're basically just re-uploading the exact same video, but you're gaining the profits from it. Um, yeah. And what were you going to say, Sola? I was actually going to say, I think it's a mix of like all of what you mentioned, because a good example where I see reaction streaming done right is where they don't published a whole original video they publish highlights or clips of it and they say like hey check out the original guy but they also like give their expertise or opinion on it a good example if any of you guys are familiar with the video game dead by daylight mm -hmm. one of the biggest streamers for dead by daylight is a guy called otsward and he is basically hailed as being probably one of the greatest players in the game they were having a tournament for a charity run and otsward reached out to the original creators of this tournament so he could amplify it, and he purposely only did clips to be like, hey, check out the original video. But not only that, he doubled down, and he any revenue he got from that stream, he donated to the original people who made it. And I'm, I'm pretty sure he kept some donations for himself. But And what I liked about it, too, was that him being a pro at the game, he was able to give very critical analysis in the game and explain what's going on to the average person. And like Hazy said earlier, give that expertise for that field. That's something I feel like is done right. On the opposite, you have XQC or even Pokimane. Pokimane did this too, where they would upload the entirety of the original video, put themselves in the corner of like the bomb corner of it, and every other man, they're like, whoa, wow, that's crazy. Whoa. And that's the whole video is just like background, like almost like the peanut gallery, just throwing stuff around. Like, and then him being like, Chad, did you see this? And it's just like, the most obnoxious thing where I'm like, okay, you have a small content creator who spent thousands of, not thousands, but who spent hundreds of hours probably around that time doing, building up their channel, working hard to getting to where they are today. And then not only that, but individual videos, I'm sure Hazy could speak on this. When it comes to editing, they spend hours upon hours meticulously editing the video just for some like big account to swoop in and like, you know, take credit of it. It's, no different from me from like the guy who said the original joke compared to the person who heard him and said it louder and the whole class laughed at that guy. Like it's just stealing. It's like very scummy. I don't like it much at all. Unless so I think you're giving I think, actual like, things to it. 
I think what you said is very much a poignant criticism because most people are talking about profitability and I think profitability is often equated to views. Well, as if there was a large channel, let's say um, one of my channels, Alex, I posted my video essay on Mr. Girl and it got seen by someone like Destiny if it can. And I would be appreciative of that, that because usually he would shout out that channel inform people of my content and that would be a big boost to me he's not just watching all of my content like a meat canyon would like some people just watch meat canyon's animations and a lot of these channels benefit immensely like in terms of the exchange rate meat canyon isn't getting i would say that arguably so that a lot of these channels are benefiting far more from meat canyon existing than me canon is um from them existing so the trade-off is questionable to some degree but if you're a very small channel and you get a larger channel just shout you out and watch your content it's exposing you to a large audience of people who would watch your content and some people might argue that there are some people who refer a video to a content creator or streamer that had no intentions of watching that ch um, content independently that's granted, that's good and all, but still, I think that there's still some grounds in terms of uploading that content, sniping it up, I mean, snipping it up, and not just re-uploading the content, especially if your commentary is little to none, because at that point, it's often questioning what is the purpose of my video, and if it's just going to exist on another person's platform larger than mine. One would even argue that there is no reason to go to my channel. So, I think... Even if Hassan were to leave, I think the person you were talking about was Jay Exe, which they did give um, Hassan a lot of credibility to not assume that they were being malicious or misinforming the audience deliberately about the positions and arguments about why they say it's wrong. They say, hey, maybe just invite people who would love to have the content shown on the channel, just with, them, with the caveat that they do get shouted out and they do get um, informed to a new audience rather than just assuming the right to do so and then apologizing afterwards because what does it mean to apologize at that point if you know that it's something wrong and you really can't argue your position as to how it's right the most tangible thing that i think is kind of hard for a lot of people um uh am i breaking up by now uh a little bit choppy earlier keep going you're it's, okay it's well now okay um the biggest problem for a lot of people currently as it stands is um, usually that they don't ask for permission. And that could be a bit of an issue because no one really knows the tangible effects. Like there is no research, quantifiably speaking, that I can point to and say, here is irrefutable evidence that in fact, when you take my content and you watch it on your streams, I am negatively impacted by the potential views I could have gotten because you didn't do enough to be transformative enough into which people would have had a reason to go external of your live streaming of it to watch my content. I like people like I am Dante's as well. He does a great job and people often encourage him to stop pausing the video. But then if you want to watch the video in its original form, go ahead and watch it. You're watching it for his commentary and insight. And some people do use this medium and this plat and other people's platforms as a form of watch togethers, but that's not what it's for. Right. I was kind of going to say the exact same thing. Like I have, I, I think it's okay if streamers watch a full video and they don't even necessarily have to like snip it up as long as they are pausing it, putting in their own insight, making it start with then, um, there is some sort of significant difference from the original clip or really original video. Uh, and uh, another group of people that I think do really well at like doing snippets and then posting their own reaction to it. Abba and Preach are, are really good at that. They can take a 20 minute long video, take the core out of it and make that into their own 10 to 15 minute video. Ordage, what's the channel called? Abba and Preach. A B A and P R E A C H. Wait, you never heard of Abba and Preach? I'm surprised by that. They're some of the biggest voices in terms of just social like discussions. It sounds like, very familiar, is what I'm asking. I've probably seen her content before. It's just a name that doesn't ring a bell off the top of so, my head right now. I, I know we were talking a little bit about it in the debate, or right before the debate, about Destiny and Destiny's wife dancing with somebody. 
um, who she was dancing with was Abba. Oh. Okay. And that's the person he's getting cucked with. I mean, in an open <laughs> relationship with. I'm sorry. Oh, brother. This guy. <laughs> this guy. My phone, that was a bit of a Forty and slip right there, gents. Like my my apologies. In the biggest quotation marks imaginable, Freudian and slip. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna say it here. I'm gonna say it honest with you. I'm gonna keep it real, man to man. If you were in a cuckold relationship or an open relationship as a man, I just don't. I'm sorry, I can't respect you. Like if you can't even respect yourself enough to where you let your woman go out and sleep with other men. How am I supposed to take you serious? Like, it's just really weird, bizarre, and gross. It's just like, so, I don't know. So now, what if you're allowed to go and sleep around with other females? Even so, I'd say the same thing, where it's like, hey, I don't respect that female as a woman. Be like, wow, you're really letting your guy just hoe up and, like, get out there and sleep with dudes? Like, or not dudes, women are like, you know, hey, man, if, if he's into that, if he's into that now. Like, <laughs> so, but, I've... like, it's just... I guess it really depends on... So you have to take the actual definition of what a cuck is. So a, a cuck is someone who likes to watch some the significant other have sex with other people. Um, so if you're taking the actual definition of the word, I would have to defend Destiny, even though I don't agree with him on his political takes. Um, he, by definition, is not a cuck. Do well, we don't know that, though. Know. It's probably of, private. He's probably smart terms, enough to keep it private. Uh, you, know, like, you know, you in got terms of point. common parliaments, in terms of po common parliaments, most people don't know whether or not uh, we can like divine whether or not that is the case is that he's finding some sort of sexual gratification from his wife plowing other dudes. However, most people are using it in the sense that like there's a lack of respect for one's person to allow some other guy to have intimate moments that other people find to have the utmost sacredity by having sex with them. So like that's usually the confines in which the word is being applied in the situation. And I think it is applicable in this way, which is hard for anyone who's completely okay with the wife um, being open with other people equally in the sense that they are. I, I, I think you have to just forfeit and relinquish your ability to convince people in that regard because it's kind of hard. Usually, there's that sort of ill. intuition. Of, they're mentally ill, though. Like, I'm not going to yeah. get gas. I know, I, I know, I know, I know you do. Okay. I'm, I'm not trying to convince you. <laughs> because I, I don't understand. I'm not going to get gaslit to believe this is okay or normal. Like, I, I see like, white people walking their fucking children on a leash and having dogs in a stroller. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I'm not thinking this is normal either. People are like, oh, it's completely okay. My child's safe. You have your child on a leash, ma'am, and you have your chihuahua in a stroller. A $350 <laughs> stroller. It's just like, holy <laughs> shit. Uh, I will say, I just want to say that like it's harder to, um, in terms of where they stand in that confine of open relationships, people are just going to be diametrically opposed. And usually that comes from some level of intuition of how these things ought to occur when it comes to a man and a wife. And it's like a theory of a relationship in that regard, which I understand Destiny's reasoning completely as to why he has that relationship. But most people are going to perceive that as copium. So there's certain, like, spears that you can't really we'll be in on like, the max <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah like uh um yeah so usually that's the case um i think i think uh yeah. it's, it's it's important to understand that like i'm i would never be in a relationship like that i couldn't for me it's it's a private thing uh our relationship is us two the the unity the, the duality uh the yin and yang in that sort of sense but some people are okay with that and hey that's just how i see it. like all right if that makes you guys happy don't oh you can be okay with it, and i'm gonna be okay no. making fun of you in public when you do it that's <laughs> how gonna do no, no 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 i'm saying i would be okay with other people having open relationships i wouldn't personally but at the same token i would look at them and go um i hopefully you wouldn't be doing it just because you're so desperate to keep that person around because that's what my mind goes to in terms of like an open relationship because that's the only reason what i would have that relationship if you ever see me do that uh got me down the streets because you know yeah, i'm, I'm gonna pull your house with a and out your misery i'm like it's okay buddy look at the grass <laughs> look at the field hazy. you're like hey are you gonna see the flowers and the rabbits i'm like yeah sorry buddy look at the fields i was like aim them back <laughs> Oh, so gosh. I have embarrassed. Wait, what? No, I didn't mean to cut you off earlier. Okay. Were you gonna say something? I was just gonna say, uh, I, I, I'm embarrassed to say I watch Destiny a lot more yeah. than I probably should. Um, but 
uh, so one thing I know for certain is he does not advocate for open relationship for other people to do open relationships. And his cope as to why he has an open relationship is because he has an issue with cheating and his wife uh, has only ever had open relationships. So he went into this knowing she does this shit. Yep. It was her idea then. Okay, that's I just feel bad for him then. Like that's just wow. Fuck, so he really could he, he has no so this is why dick discipline is, is is the reason why we're losing the West, you know. Like oh, definitely. Christianity is what's lost. The West the West has fallen. <laughs> <laughs> it's so over, guys. Well, it's Joe. It's truly. It's Joe over. So. It's Joe over. It's so over. <laughs> it's Joe over. <laughs> we have a dementia puppet that's being ruled by reptile elites in the office right now. It's just. It's never been more over than it is right now. Oh um, god. I will say in terms that. Of, uh, I was just gonna say you. You do have a point there. Uh, the fact that the West is becoming o- overly sexualized definitely is being a detriment on our so- uh, on our society. I've said the same thing too. If like, I've always there's a quote that sticks with me. It's like a society that holds on to n- uh, nothing eventually loses everything. Where it's like if you as a society don't know where to draw the lines, like yeah, we shouldn't do this in public. Just because we could, that doesn't mean we should. And it's just very egregious and disgusting. It's like I said before, like I have a very complex relationship with you know the LGBT community. Where I when I see individuals. I'm very courteous, respectful. I'm like, yeah, you know, you alone as a sole person, um, yeah, you chill with me. Like, I don't care if you're gay, straight, whatever the fuck you are. Like, if you're just one-on-one talking, I'm not going to, like, treat you like you're some anomaly. Like, oh, my God, look at that person. Like, I don't care. I don't care what you do in your bedroom. But, like, if it's at a point where we have, like, pride parades, like in Los Angeles, there's a video of it where a guy was in a very small neighborhood, not in a city. He opened his door, and the first thing he saw, mind you, neighborhood of children, were like grown men in their 40s or 50s wearing like black leather thongs just dancing oh, around. And then I'm just thinking, this isn't in like a city. This isn't like in a very condensed urban area. This isn't like the suburbs now. Like where people like children play. They're dancing around where children are at. And then to me, I'm like, that's just egregious and disgusting. Just because you could, does that mean you should, you know? And it's like, I personally, I don't support the community as in the giant collective organization thing. But if there's an individual one-on-one talking to me, I have no qualms with them whatsoever. I'm going to treat them with the same courtesy and respect as I'm sure they treat me. Because we just met each other. I don't know you. I don't know you as a person, you know? Mm-hmm. That's, That's how I view it, me personally, yeah. As a person who's also uh, pretty, pretty, pretty chill, pretty relaxed with the LGBTQ community, uh, I think all of it's pretty all right. I think everyone, in terms of consenting adults, uh, to most degrees... Uh, having intimate relationships w- with each other, so long as they're consenting and willing, and uh, you know, just not any sort of ge- questionable genetical offsprings. I'm completely okay with you guys getting along and having a happy and prosperous relationship. I, that's my, um, b- mostly where I stand in terms of this. But however, there is some sort of a uh, question we should ask ourselves to ensure that children aren't exposed to like extreme sexual fetishes at a early age in which uh, I think that would be inappropriate. There are no days for pride parades and there are days where kids can show up. However, in situations like those, that's very questionable because then we often ask ourselves did the block have a uh, have, have a buy-in to be able to say okay we'll definitely be allowing you to go through here and parade around in these areas i'm pretty sure not which is why the immediate outreach came to be however <clears throat> in terms of the 32 six scoops of like what is a lesbian and how many variations of that exists is uh, i often don't touch any of that and i think that um um Bigger questions about gen- gender and um, bigger questions about gender and the complexities of it, and what it means for somebody to have a misalignment with, between their brain and the physiology, is uh, very complex. And I don't think any of those complex conversations are often have, happening in the um, greatest scale of society. It's typically something akin to. Um, you know what? I think trans people, so long as they're adults, they're taking HRT, they're ensuring that they're living the happiest lives, and they're um, doing this 
exclusively for the purposes of, you know, um, ensuring that they can live in the body that they choose to is uh, pretty much okay. It's, it's it's akin to me if somebody getting plastic surgery, so long as you're doing it in a healthy way and you're um, operating within the confines to ensure that you are not detrimentally um, hurting yourself and you're okay with these decisions, I'm completely okay with it. Uh, to, to have something of that nature basically get responded with, you support pedophilia or something conflated to that, the discourse as a whole is basically in the trash for me, for the most part. So I usually reframe them. I'm like, every time I see it happen, I'm just kind of like, you, you, you ever seen that movie where he's like, roll him up? Like every time I see it occur, I'm just like, let me just <laughs> back well, up. Yeah, so 100% time. agree with you and all my critiques for right wingers too. It's like, if you jump the gun and immediately call someone a pedophile or like the entirety of them pedophiles, they're not going to get anywhere for conversation. Like, I think about like, if someone said this to me, would I want to talk to them or speak with them? And I find that to be like, hey, that's pretty disrespectful to call, like, an entire group, like, pedophile. So, like, you know, it's just, I don't see it as going anywhere. Like, I feel like more productive conversations, like, hey, what can we do from here and move on? And, you know, what can we do to get these people more acclimated or treated normally in society? And for, I guess, my personal opinion, here's what I believe the LGBT community could be doing that would make at least 80% of Americans respect them more and treat them normal. First thing, ditch the pride parades, get rid of it. If you can't have BDSM shit in it, then you shouldn't have it at all. Second thing, you can move it over to more private organizations or private areas and have that for funding your charity. I know in California, I saw this and I actually was able to donate some money to it, where there was a, basically a shelter for people like young teenagers who are like disowned from their parents in like a very aggressive, brutal situation because... I find that disgusting that a parent would beat their kid just because they say something like that. I don't feel like that's the way to go about it. And I want there to be shelters for these people to be safe. So I, if like, almost like a pseudo Salvation Army thing, if like the LGBT community had their version of the Salvation Army and more people were known for them, like, oh yeah, those are the guys who help, you know, like young LGBT kids. Those are guys who help, you know, afford you know, psychiatry appointments or medical appointments for young LGBT teens who can't afford it, I'd have a lot more respect for them. Because I'm like, okay, you're not flandering around in pride and vanity. You're going out of your way to help the people who are quiet, basically. Then the people as a society won't help. And I believe you know, through these actions, you would get more of the majority of people to look at this and respect. Like, okay, they're trying to get their shit together. They're trying to live their lives just like I'm trying to live my lives. I shouldn't worry about them because they're doing their own thing. You know, I have a lot is, more respect for that. But yeah, what do you guys think about that? You know the crazy thing is, mm. you know someone will find your tweet, quote tweet it, and then proceed to say, "I can't believe this man is um, making a, a equivocation of of troops, people who have fought for their lives, to people oh, who are just decided to have a depraved sexuality, <laughs> stolen valor." Like, how did you get that from what I just said here? <laughs> yeah, no, I can't wait for after this. I just I guess, and people say one thing out second, and then. All they're going to hear is, I just like the LGBT, and they pause it like that. I was like, look, look at this piece of shit right here. I'm like, bro, you <laughs> the whole tweet. You know the worst thing is? Someone will take that sort of interpretation, extrapolation from what you said. They get blocked by you. They're like, LOL, can't handle the truth. Like, how am I supposed to engage with what you just said here? Like, <laughs> like, well, like okay. You're because, like, I genuinely, at the bottom of my heart, want to help people. Even if I don't understand people's ideologies, their way of life, I want to be there to help you. And if I know that there's nothing I can do to help or I can't understand, I want these groups of people to have other groups that can help them, that there's more assimilated to them. So, like, I don't know. That's how I'm thinking about it. Like, so for, like, the LGBT stuff, I don't fully understand it. I It just confuses me. It baffles me. I don't get it. But I treat those people with respect. I try my best to be courteous. So I'm like, hey, I think it'd be a lot more better for your community if you did things helping each other more instead of you just dancing around half naked in the street. That's how I see it, like that, you know? Fascinating. Yeah. Uh, thank you for giving, I give him my position about this. Uh, yeah, let's hear Brogy's, yeah. Uh, Brogy Bro said, uh, yeah. Bro uh, so now to give you, guys, you the question. Do you believe that tr anybody under the age of 18 should be on HRT? You know, let's get you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, the you know, if there was a way to, cause, so I, I fully believe gender dysphoria is a real thing. Some people do suffer from it, both adults and kids. The difficult part, part is we don't know for 100% certain 
which kids actually have gender dysphoria. Kids are super impressionable. You can tell them that they're a T-Rex one day, and for the next week, they'll pretend that they're a T-Rex. Um, the fact that we are simply just going off of, you say you're this, therefore you're this, it, it's, it's harming children. Um, you have, I, I, I don't remember the exact statistic, but it's somewhere between 70 and 80% of people, uh, of children will end up growing out of gender dysphoria by the time they hit puberty. That's an outrageous I like number. Too, though. What was like, that? I, I agree with that. And I feel like it's important though. Like this is, I guess my more like pushy take, I guess. And people get mad at me, especially in the right wing sphere. I am okay with those people, like, let's say 15, 16, something like that, being able to at least try to see a psychiatrist and talk it out, because I would rather they hear it from, like, a professional psychiatrist than them, like, hearing it from people on, like, Tumblr or something, they self-ID. I am very vehemently against self-ID. I think the concept is a very dangerous, slippery slope where anyone could be anything then. Mm -hmm. That's why I like more psychiatry-based, where it's like, okay, here's a neuroscience behind it, here's a professional with a literal PhD, we could talk about it. Like, but I do agree. Like, I feel like a good chunk of them, like it is something you grow out of, but I also don't want to like strip that from them for the people who genuinely are, you know, like going through that, if it makes any sense. To build right. off what you just said there is that um, the difference here is that usually when dealing with an expert, they can ascertain more authentic evaluations of that incongruency that appears when it comes to transgenderism rather than someone who was, um, of replicating more therapeutic or expert um, ling linguistics for the purposes of coming across as self-assured in terms of the IDing and the main populace. Mm -hmm. Where, like, to basically give an, I think, an adequate example of what I'm trying to describe here, someone could say something to the effect of them transitioning to another gender and with knowing through a quick, quick Google search of words and linguistics to often implicate the nature of their gender and ID, it can be a compelling narrative as to why they are another gender. Whereas if they were to use this with a psychiatrist, they know that all the person is doing here in this conversation that's supposed to be candid is giving somebody all the signals that would infer that they are that rather than it being a sincere uh, issue of where they stand, like, like um, psychologically speaking, in 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 the physical body, in or like the um, the matter makeup of their brain. So yeah, I would I would highly push that the evaluation is uh, first and foremost than just simply self ID because then we call into question um, what is the reality of um, transgenderism and who you are as a person. I believe that is a biological necessity that there is an element of it that comes from the makeup of the body. It's not just because if we were to forfeit any biological facets of this idea, then we lend ourselves to simply something that is a social cohesion, something of a social contaminants in which somebody is just that gender because it is um, more of a popularity thing or just a something that was socially influenced. And I am holistically against the belief that that is the case for the majority of transgender people. But then again, when it comes to the scope of these things, I think one of my favorite moments uh, is like Matt Walsh, who made an entire documentary about what is a woman. And he said the people that are on HRT are like in the millions. <laughs> yeah, that was insane. That was absolutely ridiculous. And then just to have it fact checked like five seconds later, just for it to be uh, a few thousand. I mean, don't get me wrong. That's that's a lot, but nowhere near what Matt Walsh. Like, you made an entire documentary about this, and you weren't able to do like just a little bit more research. He made it sound like they were under every rock, every crevice, behind every corner, under like, every rock. Like, <laughs> yeah. I just like it come out. I was like, you got HRT. I was like, whoa. Really? <laughs> I, every just me on a toilet. I feel a hand like touch, crest my leg behind me. You got HRT, bro. I'm like, no. <laughs> like, <on the> toilet. <laughs> That's a good one. Under every rock, it's it's, it's amazing. Oh, wait, to articulate it. Um, especially I, I love how Joe Rogan was just like millions. Do you really think it's millions? 
hey, can, can we just get that? Like, he's like, okay, I just, I can't have you say that on my podcast and it just be something so clearly objectively not true. I, I'm going to have to just, I'm going to have it's to like just Joe Biden about. talking about COVID um, numbers. He's like, oh, Americans, there's been millions. I mean, billions even of like oh, young Americans that died of COVID. We need to put a stop to this now at all costs. And I'm like, there's no way fucking you said billions of people died by COVID. There is no way. <laughs> like, yeah, some of the stuff I'm just like, Joe, we need you to come back to up just a little bit. I know, like, you you seem like a more efficient out on the subject matter because you bought a cigar and this one crack job who uh, is just flabbing off of the mouth who <laughs> he is understanding of, like, um, basically the usage of, like, a vaccine is not all the way there because having a similar like understanding of where it started from is not basically where it is in this current iteration but I, I need you to come back to earth just a little bit when it comes to this conversation but in terms of um the discourse i feel like it's a lot of even people like um philosophy too have been talking about how it's it's medically gatekeeped as to what it means to be transgender and i think philosophy tube is absolutely a smart person i think they're very articulate i think they've shown themselves to have a very um strong handle on, as to what is philosophy and to make pretty good videos on a monthly basis however i don't think people have the same sort of philosophical wherewithal to go through that evaluation without some sort of medical upkeep so i don't i don't i don't think we should encourage people to just go well you know, you, you, you just, you'll just know. I, I think again, I, while I say like going back to what I was saying earlier, I prefer, you know, medical route instead of self ID because philosophy bros, like philosophy tube would drop like a two to three hour long, like manifesto, like why the metaphysical, you know, elements of this and this. And it's like, yeah, sure. I'm sure you can convince like, you know, someone who's like a scholar, or, like some educated person in that field, but like the layman, like the average Joe in the street is gonna look at that weird and be like, "Yeah, it doesn't make sense." It's like you just call yourself anything. Like, but definitely, I agree with what you're saying. More of a scientific route is better. But mm -hmm. oh, um, what was I gonna say, Broji? Hope you guys aren't. Oh, don't mind changing the topic. But are there any games you looking forward to coming out? Any games you'd recommend playing? Uh so it it all depends on what you're into. So I really like multiplayer games. Um, that's just something that I've always been accustomed to. I think the main reason why I'm more of a multiplayer person is because we only ever had one system and majority of our games growing up were single player games, meaning that my brother, who was obviously older, would hog the system while I was just basically forced to just sit there and watch him play. Uh, so... As you should. Big brothers stay winning. <laughs> Coming from the big brother, big brothers no, stay winning. <laughs> no, it fucking sucked. So, like, there'd be times where we snuck, uh, we stayed awake until my parents went to sleep. And my brother would be like, all right, you keep watch while I play video games. And so I would literally fall asleep at the bottom of the stairs waiting for him to get off so that way then I could play. And, oh, man, it was absolutely terrible. If you, anyone who's a younger sibling under, understands. <laughs> Can't relate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like an asshole saying that. I got three younger brothers, so it's always like that. But um, I remember when I was really little, what I used to do with them, we had wired remotes at the time to mm -hmm. hook up in our Xbox 360. I would simply put it in, but not fully plug it in to make it look uh, like it's on. You were one and of those people. Like, hey, yeah, and then they're like, am I playing? I'm like, yeah, buddy, look at this screen right there. It'll be some NPC walking in circles. He's like, wow, I'm doing something. I'm like, yeah, bud, good job. And I'd just be playing my game. <laughs> and then that always would stop him from running. He'd be like, mom says my turn to play the Xbox, basically. <laughs> but that was my go-to. I was that guy, yeah, for his older brother. <laughs> so, like, I understand, like, back then, there weren't a lot of multiplayer games out there. And there was like Call of Duty, Halo was a big one. Um, and I, I pretty much think that's it. Whereas nowadays you have, I mean, there's so many different multiplayer games out there. There's Valorant, there's CSGO, which are basically the same thing. League of Legends. Um, let's see, they're like, they're, there's such a huge variety that 
I, I think you're starting to see more people not be like that. <laughs> I think my game, um, in terms of gaming, I, I'm a very much a online service sort of individual. I'm, I've been uh, shackled to these to these um, implementations of um, drip, drip feeding uh, content to the audience. This continuous uh, metamorphosis of the content over a long period of time. This uh, means that I enjoy games like Dead by Daylight and uh, Overwatch, who have been my go-to games. Every time I get off, I kick back and proceed to have a brain image as I ask myself, why does my Genji on my team have 17 and three um, what rank are you in Overwatch? What rank are you in Overwatch? At oh, peak? Uh, at my peak, I was a uh, disgusting low bottom feeding silver. So, like, don't don't mind me. I'm not talking about as as, as the, the, the top of the echelon. Yeah, I'm diamond rank one, baby. I, diamond. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, Which, so, there's only three games in my life I have put over a thousand hours in. One has to be Dead by Daylight, second one has to be Overwatch, and the third one has to be Halo Master Chief Collection. Uh, those are the only so three games I possess where I have over a thousand hours in those games, but that's... Who do you main? Who do I main? Um, I main tanks a lot, so I basically learned how to play every tank, but I have a gold gun with just about every tank in that game. Because oh, I've been playing like since... Code. Yeah, I've been playing since... Basically beta of Overwatch until like now Overwatch Two, which is dead. It's a dead game, but I only play it for nostalgia's sake. But I think the game is uh, still doing pretty decently in terms of like its uh, player base. The only problem is that they promise a PVE, and it's definitely uh, not. Yeah, really Diablo cool. Four fucking killed that. Where they took their whole developer team and moved it to Diablo Four instead, and they kind of pulled the plug on Overwatch Two. Like, yeah, we're not gonna like update this at all. It's whatever. And I'm like, wow, thanks, assholes. Like, really, really nice move, Blizzard. Uh, the, the only thing I have a problem with is just the, uh, the here's the thing. If I spend money on something, if, if, if I trade you my shekels for, 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 for a, a, a little bit, a smidgen of cosmetics, I just want my cosmetics. I don't want to have to <laughs> grind for the thing I just put money to purchase to get. Like, I missed oh, the loot box system because I felt like that was I really fun. Do. Oh it was grindy, but it was at least fun. Like, the absolute dopamine high you'd get when seeing a gold item fling out of a loot box. You're like, oh, it's a legendary! And it's like, let's go! That's truly, truly, that was the only time period where you can respect someone doing the BJ face in one of them thumbnails. Like, oh my goodness, 32 open boxes and you get something nice. But in these games, the battle passes, I don't know who did it. Ooh, these people made pass. these, these battle passes. We, we, the battle pass question is what we should be asking ourselves. Uh, oh, yeah. Ask, uh, ask, ask, <laughs> well, what's going to be on the battle pass question? Uh, I, <laughs> like, like, what I you say is if you have to pay to get cosmetics and whatnot, like you're you're pretty much saying like if you're poor you suck like yeah <laughs> like yeah i understand that yes. it's a way for them to make more money but man i think i've in all my time gaming i've maybe bought the battle pass in a game maybe two or three times to me, okay, um, this is the problem. Go ahead, that. Hazy. I got to tell you a shameful story after this. Go ahead, Hazy. <laughs> it's like, oh, how do we how do we get people to play the game for long periods of time while also getting them invested in all of the uh, material we're making for a big game? I know we'll make a battle pass. So whereas if you wanted a cosmetic, not only are you not able to get that cosmetic immediately, but you have to grind for it. So we're forcing and mandating the amount of hours you have to play the game to get that thing you wanted. I love that about games. I know that some cosmetics cost like $5. I know some cosmetics cost like $20. But you know what? I would rather just pay that $10 and get the cosmetic I fucking wanted just to have it rather than have to go, oh, I bought the battle pass. Now I have to set um, aside an unfeasible amount of time just to get the fucking cosmetic I actually wanted because it's at the end of the fucking cosmetic wheel. And I work a whole job because I'm an adult who has to provide for themselves. Now I have to make sure that I push back a amount of time to make sure that I spend my money wisely and that this battle pass doesn't go out because then it's FOMO and I, oh no, I don't have this battle pass definitively. It's just for the time being. It's just for the possibility just to get the smidgen of the crumbs. I'm sorry. It sounds like I'm having a fucking hemorrhage here and I'm about to go to a psych <laughs> war, but fucking holy hell, that was my fucking feeling when my first battle pass and that's why I'll never do it again. <laughs> I've never heard you that angry before. Holy fuck. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was personal. That was deep. <laughs> yeah, I, had to, I had a Vietnam flashback for a minute. There. <laughs> no, all good. So, fuck off. I don't want. I don't even know if I want to say his story on camera, but here it goes. So, I'm sure we're all familiar with the video game called Fortnite, correct? Yeah. So I played it when it first came out, grinded it for like a good week just so I could get a victory royale, basically, so I could take a picture for like. You know, freshman year high school to post on my snap, be like, yo, I got a victory for now, guys. And then didn't touch the game since. I enlisted in the military, go through my thing. I end up meeting, like, you know, a group of buds. One of these guys was, I would play video games with him every other day. Um, shout out Donnie for listening to this. And really cool dude. One of, I consider him a brother to me, basically. He's a great guy. We ended up hopping games, and then he tried to get me into Fortnite. And at first, I was hesitant, like, nah, I don't want to get into it. So I, um, he kind of persuaded me, because, like, all of his friends played it, too. And we were playing that, and I'd always get bodied, bodied on myself. But when I played with him, he'd basically carry me. And it just made me feel good to, like, be part of a team or something like that, although I was, like, horrible. But here's where it gets worse. I didn't have a skin in the game, and apparently you needed a skin. So I'm like, all right. I go through the item shop. Oh, it's a Deadpool skin. Buys that. 20 bucks. That's a bit pricey. Oh, well. All I need is like that once. And then next thing they're asked, like, oh, you got a skin. Where's your glider? I'm like, what's a glider? It's like, oh, you God. need that now. <laughs> so I had to buy the glider. And then piece by piece. Oh, that's cool. Where's your pickaxe? I need to buy a pickaxe now? And then I'm going through buying all these random things. And then it's just, I get hooked. And then I'm like, yeah, for guys, like, I finally got set up. Meanwhile, all of them already switched all their skins and stuff like that. Like, oh, all three of us are rocking the same skin. Just buy this skin really quick. And it became addicting. It was like heroin to me. It was like collecting like Funko Pops, if you will. It's just I could get enough. I was like, I need more. So me being a dumbass in the military, single like man male who's like making, you know, a thousand dollars a paycheck, just thinking you know, like, huh, what could I spend my money on today? I know. Ding and eh. Lo and behold, yeah, yeah, I got really deep in there. You guys want to guess how much money I spent on that cursed oh, game? No. Oh, no. I'm going to guess we in the ballpark of 250 Higher. Oh, God. What? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was being ridiculous by saying 250 I thought you was low balling, too. Oh, no. Um, I spent... Go ahead, AZ. I want to hear what you're going to guess. Okay, I'm going to guess... Uh, I'm going to guess a generous number. Uh, 485 Higher. Oh jeez! <laughs> I spent five hundred seventy-five dollars in that fucking game. <laughs> and listen, <laughs> this was <laughs> my biggest financial regret in my life. Not even me <laughs> being a strip club blowing money equated to how much I've lost on this. Like, and it just—it's like death by a thousand cuts. You just don't notice. You're just like an addict. You're like, I don't have a problem. Just one more skin couldn't hurt. Oh, that's a real good pickaxe. Just one more couldn't hurt. And I'm just sitting here looking at my bank account like, what have I done? Like, the Optimus Prime meme of Optimus just being like, what have I done? I'm just sitting there like, no. <laughs> but, yeah, I made a vow after that never to spend anything above $100 on, like, a free-to-play game, basically. Because that shit gets you hooked, hooked. And it's bad, but... You spoke to something that... that the psychology of it all it's that idea of uh uh we, we um you know incremental you know small spinaches here there it doesn't seem like a lot when you first look at it because it's all just small inconspicuous spinning like oh three dollars for umbrella uh gliders pickaxes it makes you fit in it makes you feel cool like yeah i'm one of yeah. the boys i got the loot they got and it's just like so addicting you don't want to get bullied for wearing the default skin you don't want to what are you poor what are yeah you, you just you make want? excuses for yourself i'm like fuck <laughs> and what made it worse we were both in the military we both got paid the same day so he didn't know when i have money he's like hey man oh. did you just get a paycheck why don't you go ahead and, you know, just a little off the top, just a little for this. I'm like, yeah, a little can't hurt. $50 in one day on, like, bulk oh, buying fuck. skins. And I'm like, fuck, man, this adds up. <laughs> to, to be fair, there's nothing worse than being in a group chat with your boys, the, the guys, the, 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 the amigos, and somebody being like, oh, that's from season two. Oh, this nigga poor. <laughs> Oh no! That's so <laughs> it's for nostalgia purpose. <laughs> you trying to Jeez. make yourself. <laughs> See, at least with Valorant, I can be like, Hey, anybody got the skin? Anybody got the skin? And then someone hopefully will fucking buy it for me. 
can I just say, um, I've never felt more soul crushing uh, agony and defeat than playing Valorant. Like, ah, I, I, I should have known. Like, within a I've never played Valorant. Is that game any good? Uh, or is you it played like CSGO? I have not played CSGO either. Uh, so it's it, basically it, search and destroy, but with abilities. Oh god, is uh, it? Yes. I'm guessing it's pretty addicting of a game. Uh, literally, that's how the only way I've grown my community, pretty much. Oh god. Yeah, and it's, I have um, almost three hundred followers. Oh gee, <laughs> it's like that man grinding on that. <laughs> it, it's, but I'm gonna say this much, and uh, if you're if you're starting off now. This is what I want to tell you. Do you find fun from the experience or for winning Solus? Me, I find it depends the game. There's some games like Dead by Daylight. I stop I mean, playing it. Yes or no for this? <laughs> Listen, man, it's, it's hard to. I'm a competitive you... guy. I don't like losing. Okay. Okay. So yes for then, me for winning. Okay. I just want to make sure because if you're playing Valorant, there's nothing more soul crushing than getting just. just absolutely touched within a picosecond because you decide god. to look over the wall like huh oh god. i got my angle set up maybe i should move oh, just a little bit you wall peak and your head just gets flying off your body yes. like well <laughs> it, is, it is the worst feeling ever either that or someone will wall bang you basically they shoot through your wall or shoot through a wall and you're sitting there like how the fuck did he see me uh, you, you know how you can see, like, you know how you have a room that is uh, next to the kitchen? You can kind of see the kitchen through that, like, slit between the two walls. That's 90% of angles within the Valorant. That moment of, let me just line up my shot and hopefully <laughs> someone will come through this way. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to get my face blown off. Yeah, you know. The, the mistake right. I made was actually going, haha, I can just move around here because I got powers. Face gets blown off. Like, who, <laughs> who, killed, who killed me? That's ninety percent of the. That's why I said like, if you're playing for the experience, play something else. If you're playing to win, they, they're valid for you. you. You're gonna enjoy the grind of, of getting good in that game. The worst um, part is when you're a low skill level and you do an unrated game and you're going up against the highest fucking ranked people out there. Yeah, you think that unranked is like, oh yeah, this is not competitive. Like, oh no, this is, this is what the people come to just like stomp a mold. Never understood muscle. that. I never understood that why people are so fucking sweaty and unranked. This was seen in like Smite. If you know what that game is, it's like yeah. bootleg League of Legends. Mm -hmm. I play that game religiously as well. And people would like it'll be literally saying a title casual or like you know casual, and then people are like, wow man, you didn't rotate point three milliseconds earlier. I'm like, bro, you were literally changing your shirt. Per game, that's how much you're sweating right now. You have to remove articles of clothing to get a fresh one because you're just drenched <laughs> in sweat. Like it's not that deep, bro. It's casual. You're not losing rank here or anything. But yeah, yeah. Valorant's pretty much the same way. Oh, Unironi God. unironically, it's one of those games. You just like um, one of the best mechanics in the game is that they decided that like, hey, if you you know you know games guns really do have recoil. You know you can't Rambo in it. You can't run and gun. What are you what are you playing a game for like uh, uh, imagination for escapism? No 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 no. Which what happens here is that when you shoot, you you are rigid. You are as firm as a mountain. As in you lose all mobility when you shoot. So it, it, whatever well, angle you have, you, 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 you check the wind, <laughs> like the temperature outside in the game. Yeah, like whatever angle you have, you better be comfortable with that because. <laughs> Running away is not optional once you're in a gunfight. You can't just you can't just go somewhere else unless you use some particular abilities and all that. But then yep. I, I love how most abilities are just fucking sand dunes, and you're like, I hope I don't run into someone who just blows my head off in the first. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a fu it's a fun game, but uh, man, it was the first two weeks just like, um, I think I hate this game. I, I literally <laughs> just said to myself, I was like, I think I hate. I don't think I think I don't think I like playing this. I think uh. I hate everybody who involved with the creation of this game, but I do love Overwatch. I play Brig because I don't know what it is. I like playing characters that are kind of like have a difficult ramp and like close, and also a character that's a bit unconventional to how all the other game modes play. That's why I play Nurse and Dead by Daylight because they just kind of break the conventions of how the games ought to be played. Yeah, and most people you. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Yes, go ahead. I, <laughs> I, get it. I get it all the times in the DMs. Go ahead, get out your system. <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> alright real talk now I want to know Broji's opinion on this 
What do you think is the most toxic gaming community? League of Legends. Either past, present, or future. League really of Legends. League of By far. That was quick. Damn. That yeah. was quick. You can... It doesn't matter how many hours you have in. It doesn't matter how good you are. If you fuck up even the slightest, you have everybody on your ass. Like, it... It doesn't like, especially if you're a jungle, if you don't flank at the 0.1% less or perfect timing, you're going to be like, oh man, we have a shit jungle. Like, there's absolutely nothing you can do to make people happy unless you play the game absolutely. Can I reinforce what you said there? What you just said there is so important because most games, toxicities are often uh, a combination of who is to lay blame at. Usually, mm -hmm. it's hard to lay blame at anyone else when you're playing a 2v2 fighting game because you're just blaming the mechanics or you're blame the, the character being cheap. And usually, people can just retort by saying you're just not that good. And therefore, the only way to circumvent characters like Deadshot from... Um, injustice too is just to get better at the game not nerfing the character because only people who are getting destroyed by them was filthy fucking casuals but with <laughs> games like league of legends the problem being here is that everybody's contributing is tantamount it's like it's, it's yeah. tumultuous like if you die you're feeding the characters you're actually making them stronger so if you don't know how to play a character there is no such thing as Hey guys, hey guys, I want to try a new character out. Like, to get the fuck back on your main. <laughs> Everyone's going to bully you to get back to the character you know how to play. They're like, please, I beg of you to do not. If there's a character that's meta, they're going to tell you to not play any character that's not meta right now. Like, please, don't, don't do this to us. Don't, don't do this to me. Like, that's how bad it is. Since oh, yeah, so much of what way. you do in League is so much connected to how the game is going to play, it's like a flow. It's, it's never like there's gigantic swings in terms of. Um, basically, you can do one play that's going to win you the entire game. No, it's like an avalanche. If, if you start fucking up towards the beginning of the game, you prepare to be pounded for the rest of it. Like, well, mm -hmm. we like, well, <laughs> you better hope good. that your team can fucking carry you. Hey, I play support and smite, and I know it's, I never played League, but I've heard it's very similar. I'm basically the tanky tank of the team, and it's, kind it's of. usually the other way around. Yeah, Jungle is the guy who bullies people and he immediately blames everyone else. Yeah, so I mean, you you could, mean, yeah. You could always be like my cousin and be like, God damn lag. No. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I can't stop a three man rotation on my ass. Like, mm -hmm. I just can't do anything there. And it's just like, I just I just take it. I'm like, all right, sure, just keep bullying me. I'll, I'll keep covering <laughs> you guys. But. What do you guys think is an underrated toxic community? Like a toxic community nobody talks about much. Um, ooh, that one's a little bit more difficult. You know, I'd probably say Halo. Like a lot of people oh, yeah. don't think of Halo as being toxic, but if you do just bad enough, like you'll have everybody on your ass, but no one really thinks like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go get sweaty on fucking Halo. Yeah, that's really an old head game, as mm -hmm. was seen like today. And I hate to say that because I'm a big Halo fan, but I mean, you're not wrong there. Yeah. What about you, Hazy? What do you think is like a underrated like toxic community? Oh, where'd he go? Is he still in the space or is he yeah, just he's... muted? Oh, he's muted. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, he said be right back. Okay. Yes, oh, I see. I see. I see. Yeah. Um, let's see. For me, I'd have to say probably the Mortal Kombat community is very toxic. Ooh, and yep. it started around X because X had a thing called factions. Mm -hmm. So if you it, no matter how good you were, let's say you had like some guys in your faction, like three or four people, and they were dog shit. It would bring you down and drag you down with them, basically. So let's say, like, me and you are on a team. You won 10 games and you lost zero. I won five games and lost five games. We'd equal out where it'd basically be zero, zero across the board. So your 10 games would be jack shit because I lost five. Uh... And then that made a very toxic community by, like, how detrimental it was to lose a game, basically. I can understand that. But, yeah. Um, really quick with just me and you. I'm curious, like, what do you think about the presidential race? Ooh, so that's that's difficult. Uh, I feel like 
Trump is just narcissistic enough to either run from prison or run even if he didn't doesn't win the primaries, which is gonna it's gonna split the conser- uh, the Republicans no matter what. Um, you know, I really hope Biden doesn't get elected again, especially not with Kamala Harris. Fuck, as if he runs again, please just have him fucking change his vice president because i don't think america would really survive with a kamala harris presidency oh yeah she's just you want to give me some reasons like for the audience like i can already name a few but (laughs) well for, for one she her political policies are absolute absolute trash like she can't speak to save her life i don't know if you've seen some of her um, comments that she's made, but she'll be like, the reason A is so important is because A is so important. And what it's did like, you just say to me? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, right? What? It's We're like, talking about presidential stuff, yeah. It's like, are you it's actually going to say something worthwhile, or are you just speaking to hear your own voice? Exactly. You're just talking and talk. There are people that confident within conversation and discourse. Just to wrap up that little um, segment about video games, I, I really wanted to point out, that have any of y'all, just one quick question I wanted to ask. Uh, uh, has any of y'all um, watched any tournaments or anything like that? Yep, uh, I watched League of Legends mm-hmm. tournaments. Yeah, I actually do really do enjoy watching top tournaments. I, it's actually something I do when I buy a new game because I'm usually like, okay, I'm at this level, but what can I be at if I really dedicate myself to it? Yeah. And I'm like, it's always amazing to watch that occur. Like, okay, I can do that if I actually get to experimenting. And Mortal Kombat X was the one game I genuinely played competitive because of the level of MacGyvering you could do with combos was one of my favorite elements of the game. So let's, was you somebody who watched any sort of competitive play uh, in terms of tournaments? Every now and then I'd watch like fighting tournaments, but that's really about it. And they come rare and few, like Tekken tournaments and stuff. But Tekken is exceptional. I, yeah, I don't really watch like, you know, multiplayer games, if that makes any sense. I watch, mm-hmm. I like the one on one games, not like team ones. But every so, now and then, like I'd have them on for background sound, but I can't like for my life and me like name a certain team or like. You know, certain famous person who plays it like that makes any sense. But if it's like a fighting game, I can tell you all about that. I can guess that everyone here has seen that moment, uh, the wombo combo, uh, the the beautiful moment forever immortalized in gaming culture, where there's basically one player left in uh, Super Smash Melee, in which you just completely bullied this one teammate off the off the map. Is, <laughs> has everyone seen that? Clip? Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the moments where you just deliberately kill yourself. Like, all right, dude, no. <laughs> yeah, just what's the, just walk away from the system at that point. Oh yeah. Um, but going back with the presidential, uh, I, to be honest with you, I so I don't know a whole lot about the other candidates. Um, so as of right now, I'd say Ron DeSantis probably has my vote. Uh, I know a lot of people have issues with him, but that's because of, I I fully believe it's because of the media mistaking or like mis communicating what he actually is proposing, um, such as like the don't say gay bill. When in all reality, it's not a don't say gay bill. It's a don't talk about sexual things that aren't age appropriate. Yeah, I can see. Um, I was actually talking to my friend, but I got a lot of family down in Florida, and a lot of them were Cuban, so have benefited pretty positively of him being governor down mm-hmm. there. So I know Florida definitely is locked down for DeSantis if they ever did run. So I'm kind of interested to see how it goes. If I think Trump, if he could put his ego aside, realize that he's doing more damage than good by like trying to run against the Santas. It's just been doing nothing but division. Yeah. And what, yeah, what pisses me off about Trump is he's using the Republican Party as, like, his vessel, and it's all about him, while, like, people before run as a Republican to make the Republican Party better. He just runs to make himself look good, and a lot of these Trump guys are like, yeah, we don't give a fuck about the Republican Party. We're only here for Trump. 
And like, yeah, you guys are doing a lot more damage than good to anything. Mm -hmm. It's just very frustrating and irritating to me. Yeah, um, people who are extremely dogmatic for the party. But I do believe that um, DeSantis, sometimes when he's trying to be relatable, he does kind of come across as almost artificial. Like, not artificial as in, like, uh, like AI, but, like, almost... Well, actually, if I'm being honest, it does kind of feel like he's trying to replicate how human emotions are supposed to be <laughs> like. Uh, him talking about his wife being pregnant was just the most bizarre moment. It almost sound like a... Uh, I think he did what? Yeah, he was talking about like basically um, a uh, a ultrasound, and they're like, "Hey, this is your baby here." And uh, DeSantis says like, "And then I touched her uh, in the stomach," and I'm like, "Wow!" I'm like, "Why did you say it like that?" <laughs> it was just the weirdest like way to be relatable, but he made it sound so alien nature. Like that was like the first time he had came across like human concepts. But uh I think him being a very fervent and very um avenant um believer in uh, keeping the state uh separate from like global conglomerates like Disney is a very good sign of a of, of a president having a backbone. And I, I think mm -hmm. uh, in those capacities he's definitely shown himself to be someone that I do believe that um, conservatives should vote for. Um, I, I don't know what's happening in terms of the fracturing of the party. There's definitely fanatics and dogmatic um, supporters of Trump as it stands currently. And I don't know what the um, party's going to like in quite some time because if they don't like allevi alleviate that and like rectify those uh, fanatics who are basically, they don't have any political ideas, ideologies beyond you know, Trump tells it like it is. I don't know what the party's going to look like in a couple of years. Uh, yeah, I can yeah. Me oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, yeah, I understand what you, you mean there. Fucking, it seems like Ron DeSantis really needs to work on his rhetoric, whereas Trump doesn't really care what he says when he says it. He just likes to be heard. Yeah, it's just in politics too. I always see in politics as being an element as like you are giving yourself for the people, basically. Mm -hmm. Like you know, to him, it feels like he's giving himself for himself, like a bigger platform for whatever he's doing. But yeah, I'm probably just gonna vote third party again. It's usually what I usually do. Oh, you're the worst. Oh, this this <laughs> guy is the worst. Yeah, you third guys party. Dick. Like I vote third party. Yeah. <laughs> literally the nurse players of the fucking political process. <laughs> Look, I have this philosophy where I vote for a candidate who supports my values the most, and I don't personally compromise my own morals or beliefs for something, and if Republicans or Democrats want me to vote for their candidate, then get better candidates. I'm not gonna keep compromising for, like, which is worse, you know, shitty person A or shitty person B. Like, so I'm just gonna do my own thing and vert their party because a lot of them I could find a guy who has like a lot more in common with me. Even if he doesn't win, it's just like you know, the whole purpose of like democracy voting is like, oh, you have a choice in a vote. I'm like, okay, I don't see my choice being limited to two people who are equally shitty. I'm gonna vote for someone I wanna vote to. Like simple as that. It's like it's how I always view it. In the spirit of third party voting, I'm going to vote for the paper shredder next week. Uh, <laughs> the best part about the paper shredder is that it does two forms. Uh, not only do I put my envelope in it, it also shreds it in the process. It's, it's uh, metaphorically the same thing. <laughs> no, no, no. But I do believe that, like, in terms of like where a lot of the, the fracturing is happening in terms of the conservative party, I really hope that they go for DeSantis. I, I really think he's like a more sensible. Um, I, I think he has a like, genuine. Uh, uh, effort to win, and I don't know uh, the, those indictments. Ooh, them spicy the indictments oh, right. for, uh, for Trump. And them tasty, like ta the, them tabs. Yeah, the gavel, Trump is being crucified right now, and I'm like, it's, okay. And this is not, in, like, literally all you fucking politicians are corrupt, and all of you guys do what he does. He just became a target because he stood against you. Like, it's, that's all I see. It's just frustrating. I don't think he's been as opposed to the system as people as as I would like. I mean, to some degree, he definitely exploited the system. But in terms of all of them, did that. Now, so I'm saying we're, like we're talking about blatant like 
transgressions to the system. Like, hey, these documents were like private and I didn't like give the waiver to like make them unprivate to the public, but I took them anyway. Just blatant instances of like, hey, there's no gray area in terms of whether or not we're violating the law here. It is just as unequivocally, hey, I'm violating the law and like I'm being caught with it. Like unequivocally speaking, like there's no debatable sus like subsections of like laws or like uh, 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 conditions or conduct that is supposed to be described here rather it's just like hey look at what we're talking about in terms of like what we're talking about fragrant uh, like um like like violations of law and um i don't think we have um a case in terms of trumps that looks equ equ equivocatable in that regard when we look at and we say hey we have him on file and audible speaking about how i know this is a violation of of what i'm supposed to be doing but i'm doing it anyway mm -hmm. The worst part is that Trump had over a year to turn in the documents, but instead he was like, hey, we're going to hide them and be like, we don't have any documents. I don't know what you're talking about. That was the weirdest moment of, all right, so we're just going <laughs> to, we're, we're going to go there anyway, you know, <laughs> but I really want to, um, it's, it's going to be interesting. Um, I don't know if we're going to have Joe, um, you know, Sleepy Joe the sequel, you know, I'm always, uh, uh, I'm not quite sure. I haven't done a lot of uh, research. He's, he's running again? Yeah, I'm not he's, quite he's, sure. So he oh, said no. a few months ago that he was going to run again. Whether or not that changes before. because of his age, who knows? I don't know. I, I, <laughs> in, terms of, in terms of some of the stuff that I've seen of him, I'm just like, I think you've done an excellent job, man. You know, COVID vaccines have done a great job, you know, accelerating the uh, Afghanistan despite some what of a of a questionable leave of it i think it was good for in terms of like mm -hmm. um, messing up the troops and finally putting that board to bed and you know uh definitely helping out with the similar checks that uh, was given out to people to uh, ensure to cushion people for financial reasons i think uh, all of that was really in good favor i don't know if another scoop of ice cream is going to uh, help out the country uh here in uh in the next uh coming up four years because uh I, <laughs> the, the uh the concern of stringing together like words of coherent speech is definitely going to cause for more concern from people when like i don't know uh, he, he is up there i i think I'm genuinely, uh, I'm, I'm interested in your uh, perspective on this. What do you think it should be the cutoff state for, like, people who are up there? Like, McC when I see McConnell just, like, zone out and become a frozen, like, literally lagging IRL, I'm like, there has to be a cutoff date for these. <laughs> you, terms, you got I it. believe bring in terms. I don't, yeah, definitely terms. <laughs> like, what's happening here? So I believe it should we, be a, all about your cognizance. Like, if you are mentally stable, and able to get through a sentence um and if have rational thought i think that there's no real issue with you running for presidency but as we can see with biden that he he can't i watched mcconnell i, I watched mcconnell and i heard the aol like load up like like sound behind him like he went up to the podium with an aha was <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> Does this man just log off mid sentence? What's happening right now? <laughs> but yeah, um, I think uh, in terms of like, um, it's 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 definitely going to be, <laughs> hmm, in terms of um, what you guys are at um, politically speaking, in terms of the um, runnings for the the race. Who do you think? Beyond beyond DeSantis uh, for the Democratic Party, uh, I never get to I never get to ask since usually like, I don't RFK get. Uh, Jr., I'd say. Hmm? RFK Jr. for Democrats if they were going to try to find someone else, but me personally, if what's it called, if Joe Biden hypothetically in this dystopian world wins again, he's going to die in office, and Kamala Harris is going to be president. And that's going to be reality I don't want to be in. Like, I'm, I'm right there with you. It, like, we think that Biden is bad because of his age. Kamala Harris is in a, like, decent age. She just isn't cognizant enough to... Like, at least Biden has an excuse. What the fuck is Kam Kamala Harris's excuse? All I currently hear is no one wants to see a strong black uh, mixed race woman oh, be a. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm doing it. Oh, yes. I'm doing it today. Today is the day. <laughs> 
<laughs> but um, I would love. I can't wait to see. To be honest, to be honest, I'm always interested in preliminaries. Um, I'm getting a lot of feedback right now. Is someone's mic open or something like that? Oh, sorry about that. Let me one mic. Um, I'm always interested in these preliminaries that are usually going on around this time. It's usually a great time to scout out the fields. Uh, maybe we maybe we get uh, Andrew Yang the sequel. He was he was he was really for the people, you know. He was really uh, in touch with jobs and the ever encroaching advancements in technology that would make a lot of hard labor obsolete. So maybe we'll get that guy in, you know. Maybe 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 he'll be back. And maybe and just maybe if we prey upon a star. Bernie, you know, the Bernie boys make it back, you know, the Empire oh, Strikes Back. The Bernie Burns, is the never Burns. gonna win. Beanbags, bro. We, he we older gotta... than Biden or like same age as him? I uh, thought he was older than Biden. Like, I know he's like a walking corpse, too. I mean, at least he's cognizant. I'll give him that much. True, actually, that's the, 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 you know, he's very articulate, you know, he's uh, really for the people there. But um, in terms of, uh, you know, um, the podcast, um, we really uh, had some um, enjoyment um, having you on. But if you, if I was to ask you, since you're in the, the spirits and, you know, you enjoy debates, what would be your, um, what would be a debate you would want to see? Um, Solus and, uh, you know, my boy here, uh, jo- um, um, what would you want to see? Who, who would you want to see debate each other currently if you could arrange that debate? Ooh, oh, I know people who like, want to arrange for a debate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I'm still pretty new into the debate sphere that I wouldn't really be able to give you a, a good answer on that one. Um, a topic that I think would be really good, and I believe Andrew Yang um, actually is the one where i'm getting this idea from uh i believe he said that in we should allow the first basically to get your associate's degree to be free but any schooling you want to do after that um you have to pay for it yourself and i think that that is a very it's a way to get us more educated um make college and secondary schooling a lot more uh, affordable as well as making it so that way then uh our fucking general education doesn't sink down below every other country i agree in that that's fair enough I really, right. Andrew is a nice guy. We had um, we had one of his dudes on our podcast a few episodes back. Really liked to get him back on, but yeah, um, Broji, I appreciate you being on Requiem Radio, my brother. Is there any closing words or anything else you want to say before we wrap up today? Uh, the biggest thing I have to say is, you know, nowadays we're seeing a lot of division okay. in the political sphere. Um, it's either you're right, I'm wrong type of thing without actually being able to have a general discussion. You know, our country was founded on freedom of speech, and that's something that we should absolutely focus on. Well said, well said. Uh, Hazy, you got anything you want to say before we close it out? Um, oh, well, Broji uh, told me he uh, was typing out like um, one of those hackers in the 90s where uh, I'm trying to get through the firewall that's an encrypted in Portuguese about how much Bunk was a bitch. And I was like, whoa, bro, you can't tell me this in <laughs> private. Like, I'll have to air it out in the podcast. But, you know, if these two titans were to collide, I would love to see it. I would love to see the debate between these two individuals. But beyond that, I'm Paisy Dialects, and you've seen this all in HD. Yeah, hell yeah. And um, Bunk, if you see this, man, all love, no hate, but, you know... Just uh, I think you should hit up, yeah. Just hit up Roji, man. Um, what's it? Also, if you're listening to this, looking forward to our vegan debate. If it hadn't happened yet, or in the future, that should be enjoyable. I'm looking but, forward yeah. to that crushing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I'm Solo Requiem. You have Hazy Dialect in HD, and you have Broji. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night.